Okay, here I'm going to provide a brief overview of cellular respiration, focused mainly on glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain here. So, the quick overview of cellular respiration is a controlled sequence of steps re releasing energy from sugars. Essentially, glucose is converted back to carbon dioxide. The way to think about cellular respiration is it's the opposite of the photosynthetic process. Cellular respiration occurs in active cells, meaning both plant and animal cells, and the mitochondria is the organelle where this process takes place. So if you look at kind of the equation here, glucose plus six oxygens through the process of cellular respiration yields carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Again, this is occurring in the mitochondria. Heat and ATP or energy are being essentially released, and it's taking in glucose and oxygen, Okay, that's made for the process of photosynthesis, and it's releasing carbon dioxide, which is then needed or combined with sunlight or solar energy and water to form the glucose and oxygen that then the mitochondria need to use, and the circle goes around and around. So if you can memorize the photosynthetic reaction, if you simply point the arrow the other way, you'll notice we have the cellular respiration equation. Now we're going to take a general sense of this, but I want to have you a comparison because respiration occurs kind of in two ways. Aerobic, in the presence of oxygen, or is also anaerobic when there's no oxygen. Aerobic is when there's oxygen present. It's very efficient, produces a total of 38 ATPs, 36 are gained because there's a little bit of an ATP investment there. The final products are water, carbon dioxide, and 34 ATP molecules. You might be wondering, well, I just said 36 is what we gained for ATP, right? Well, the final product is 34. Two of those ATPs come from the anaerobic portion initially started. When it's aerobic, we're talking the mitochondria. Remember, our ATPs are adenosine triphosphates. In anaerobic, without oxygen, we have very low efficiency. We're only gaining a total of two ATPs. In plants, et et ethanol, carbon dioxide, and four ATPs are produced. And this is kind of called like fermentation. You see here with the fermentation of wine, our grapes into wine. That's an anaerobic respiration process. In animals, we generate lactic acid. If you ever had sore muscles and feel that, you know, sore um, muscles after a intense workout, that's because your muscles went through and generated lactic acid. And that's an anaerobic process. And that acid is what you feel on your muscles. And it's kind of like sore and you're stretching. And that's what you're feeling. It's still literally a burning effect because it's an acid. An anaerobic portion of respiration occurs in the cytoplasm. Respiration, both types, start out with the same glycolysis. Glycolysis is the first step in the breakdown of glucose to extract energy for cellular metabolism. No oxygen is needed. This generates small amounts of energy. Now our glucose can be broken down to our fructose, to our PGA, to our pyruvic acid. I'm not going to get into all the details here, Please realize that this is a very complex uh, sequence of steps that's involved. Pyruvic acid, which is without oxygen or fermentation, does not yield much energy. It's a take-home message here. Most is tied up at the end alcohol or the acid. Ethanol would be an example. Plants convert ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Animals pr produce lactic acid. So you can see here's our ethanol with our floor plant with waterlogged roots. And here's our muscles after vigorous exercise, we're producing a lot of lactic acid. Only 7% of the energy in glucose molecule is removed in a fermentation process. So there's a lot of disadvantages. There's only two ATPs gained. NAD plus becomes filled with electrons quickly, can't make more ATP. That's the disadvantages. So you may wonder why would this even occur in the first place? Well, there's a couple advantages in the sense that glycolysis can actually occur very quickly, produce thousands of ATPs in a few milliseconds doesn't require oxygen because it can occur in environments that lack oxygen. So this ability to drain ATPs quickly is important when you have vigorous exercise because your muscles aren't able to get oxygen efficiently enough. So in order to generate some energy, your body is going to go through this glycolysis process. Sadly, the after effect is that acid that is produced. Now, when in the presence of oxygen, we have something called the citric acid or Krebs cycle. This is aerobic respiration. 39% of the energy is stored as ATP, versus only 7% with fermentation, so much more efficient. High energy yielding. 36 ATPs are gained for one glucose molecule. 602s are converted to six carbon dioxides. 
And remember, there's also six water molecules are produced. We have to balance our equation. So it's high energy. Found a nice little um, overview movie animation. If you want to view that, you're more than welcome to. This is showing just glycolysis, uh, pyruvic oxidation, and citric acid cycle, and how these are all involved in aerobic respiration. Lastly, for those who really want to know about the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, and the complexities, this is an image of that. Keep in mind, because it is a cycle, we do see this kind of rotating event where we need to regenerate what we started with. Uh, for intensive purposes, I want you to know just the general um, information about the respiration process. And in this video, I'm not going to get into all the specifics.